Anthony Sequera here with CBT Nuggets, and in this micro nugget, I just wanted to demonstrate how easy it is to get hands-on practice when it comes to studying for your CCNA routing and switching. I think a lot of times we tend to make this more complicated than it might need to be. And in this micro nugget, I'd like to show you one approach that I think you'll find quite simple and straightforward. So let's pretend I'm at the ICND2 study phase of my CCNA, and I am looking at the exam topics, and I get to this topic right here, and it is configure and verify OSPF multi-area, and I get to this particular topic domain right here, router ID. Okay, well, this is something that I definitely want to get hands-on experience with at the command line, so let's do it. In order to test router ID functionality, I don't need any complex, sophisticated technology. No, in fact, I really just need a single device. But, I mean, in fairness, the router would not exist in a vacuum, right? So what I'll do is I'll grab GNS3, and I'll create a new empty project. I'll grab my router that I have in GNS3, and I'll drag one into this area here for creating a topology and then I'll drag one more. We'll just use two routers that will be more than enough in order to fully test this router ID functionality. I'll now shift click on my connection options and we'll just go ahead and put a serial connection between these two devices. I'll go ahead and uncheck that so I'm no longer on the option to select a particular connection and then we'll go ahead and start these routers and we will begin our exploration of router ID in OSPF. So I right click the R1 device and choose console to get to its console. We are going to go into the serial 1 slash 0 interface and we're going to provide an IP address. Oh my goodness, what IP address should I use? Well, I have R1 and then I have R2. Why don't I do 12, 12, 12. Get it? It's the connection between R1 and R2. This is the R1 device, so I'll end it with a 1. And then we'll do use a 24-bit mask. We'll no-shut this particular serial interface. We're going to use HDLC by default, default, aren't we? So we don't have to do anything fancy as far as the serial interface goes. We can see this side is up. We'll go ahead and save our configuration because we may want to use this particular topology again. Now let's move over to R2 and configure the other side of this link. So here we are on our, here we are on R2. I'm going to go into the serial 1 slash 0 interface. IP address 12, 12, 12. This will be the dot two device. And we put in an IP address and we no shut this interface. And it's now time to make sure that this link works. We wouldn't want to go any further with our practice without a functioning link between these two devices. And it may take a moment here for things to fully initialize between these two devices. And it looks like I'm going to have to do another ping. And that works great. Okay, so the link between these two devices is healthy. We're now ready to go in and drop in OSPF. So I say router OSPF 1. I'll say network 12.12.2. A wildcard mask of all zeros to be very specific for that interface and we'll make this area zero. I'll end and save my configuration. Now we go over to the R1 device. On R1, router, OSPF1, network, 12, 12, 12 .1, our all zero wildcard mask, area zero, and in adjacency should establish between these devices, and it does. Show IP OSPF is how we can check our router ID, and our router ID is 12, 12, 12, 1. Of course it is. Show IP interface brief, it's the only IP address on this particular device. So of course that's the router ID. Now wait a minute, it should be the highest IP address of an active interface. So if I go in and I say interface loopback zero, IP address 100, 100, 100.1, and say 
of course, no shut, but the loopback is already up, so no need to do that. So now show IP interface brief. We have this larger IP address on this device. Now, show IP OSPF. Of course, the router ID didn't change, so we're learning something here, aren't we? What if we go in and we say interface serial one slash zero shut? What if I shut the interface for 12, 12, 12, 2? Do show IP OSPF? No change. No change. Interesting. All right, let me no shut. That didn't work. See what we're doing? We're completely experimenting at the command line with all aspects of the router ID behavior so we fully understand it. What if I did this? Clear IP OSPF process. And then I believe we have to, nope, we can just say clear IP OSPF process. And it says reset all OSPF processes. I'll say yes. Okay, so everything just reset. Show IP OSPF. Look at this. The router ID is still the same. Okay? So we're learning a lot about this particular router ID behavior. I'm literally learning as I work with this. I, I forget all these nuances of router ID. So once it's selected here, we saw that changing it can be really, really tricky. Let's do this. Let's reload this particular router. So I'll go ahead and type reload. I will save the configuration and I'll pause the video and we'll see what happens after a reload. Okay, we've re reloaded the device. How about a show IP OSPF? Aha, that did it. So what we learned here is with the router ID and we literally beat this up from a hands-on perspective in order to investigate it, we see that OSPF during its initialization, that's right, during its establishment on the device, will look at the interfaces and grab the highest IP address of an active interface. Now, what if I wanted to reset it back to 12, 12, 12, 1 without a reboot, though? I'm suspecting there's a way, and that would have to do with the router ID command, right? So let me try it. Router OSPF1 router ID, we could set it to absolutely anything, but I'll go ahead and pick the 12, 12, 12, 1 address, and it says, okay, if you want that to take effect, all you got to do is clear IP OSPF process. So I'll say end, I'll go show IP OSPF, and we can see it is still at 100, 100, 100.1, and then according to the router, if I do a clear IP OSPF process, and say yes, and then do a show IP OSPF, it is indeed set to 12, 12, 12, 1 that we set the router ID to. Could we really use anything we wanted? One last test here. I'll say router ID, oh, we'll make up something crazy, 7777. Seven, seven, seven. And sure enough, it just says clear IP OSPF process in order for that change to take effect. Show IP OSPF. And now it's this crazy address that doesn't even exist on our router of 7777. So I don't know about you, but I'm feeling great about how easy it is to very quickly practice a particular element of CCNA at the CLI, I'm also feeling excellent about the router ID behavior. I can cross that off my list. I fully understand how the router ID is selected and how they would operate in the nuances of that, and we tested it at the command line. So in this micro nugget, we discussed how simple it is and we demonstrated it, how simple, very quickly, you can fire up a couple of routers, in this case in GNS3, and thoroughly practice an element of your CCNA curriculum in order to fully, fully understand it. 
experiment just as I did with these features and your learning will progress very, very rapidly and you'll be prepared for any certification exam question they might possibly throw at you. Notice how many nitpicky and difficult questions about router ID that we potentially answered in this micro nugget. I sure hope this micro nugget was informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.